Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the familiar Board of Trustees public hearing on local law number four, amending the section 20841 of the code of the village of Fredonia to lower the speed limit in certain locations within the village limits. Uh, I guess I'll call the meeting to order and ask the board uh, to consider uh, adjourning this a public hearing uh, for the purpose of holding it at a more later time. The DOT, I had a conversation with the DOT and uh, they have to run a traffic study and it's weather pro uh, uh, re required, you know, I guess weather permitting. Weather, weather, permitting. Permitting. weather permitting, that's the word I'm looking for. So it might not happen within the 62 days that we have to hold our, a vote on it. So it's up to the board. I'd like to have you consider uh, adjourning the meeting until we have a, a solid answer from the DOT after their traffic study, whether or not they will allow us to change the, our village code to lower the speed limits. So at this time, I realize uh, we had a couple people out in the audience that they left, but uh, I asked the, the audience participants if they would just leave uh, their correspondence with us or correspond with the village here later on to let us know their thoughts and we could uh, include that possibly in, in the different uh, local laws. So at this point in time, I'd ask if uh, somebody would make a motion to adjourn this public uh, hearing for the local law. I'll make the motion. It's been a motion. And I'll second that. And there's been a second. It's been a motion and a second to adjourn this public hearing on proposed local law number four of 2022, a local law amending section 208-41 of the code of the village of Fredonia to lower the speed limit in certain locations within the village limits. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. We will begin our workshop. One, call for a public hearing for CDBG application for funding to support the White Inn. Are there any comments or any questions? Nope. Okay, super. Call for a public hearing on local laws number five and six, and those refer to the proposed water and sewer rate increases. Any comments, any questions? Um, Arlissa did supply us with basically the similar information that she did for the last what, rate change, um, just outlining how it's going to impact um, certain levels of what people are paying, so local businesses and stuff. So that should be in your mailboxes. Yes, Erlis, I have a question. The sure. revenues that are um, proposed to be generated, where does that put us in relation to being uh, as far as the um, a deficit or are we in the black? Still puts us about $400,000 short. So we're roughly almost 500 and some thousand dollars in deficit in the water fund currently? Yes. Is most of that due or any of that due? Or what exactly is that due to, please? <laughs> Increase in costs and decrease in revenue. Okay. I assumed it had to do a lot with our supplies and materials to produce. Yes, they went up immensely. We're, we're tracking the amount of water that we're selling, right? So yes. we would be able to know to date if we're selling, if we sold as much this year as we did the same time last year? Yes. Are we? It actually the, looks better this year for sales of water a little so, bit. So we're selling as much water mm -hmm. and the cost has gone up so much yes. that we're a half a million dollars in the red because Correct. of cost increases. Yes. And a decrease already in the revenues and the fund charging of the town of Poffred. Yes. Contracts. Um, on this particular um, proposal, the rate increase is, is so significant to the larger users um, 
way beyond the previous proposal of the, the previous public hearing. Um, many thousands of dollars, almost. Uh, it's, it's, when when the consideration was supposed to be for how it uh, address, how it addressed the uh, larger users, there was the, um, there was trustees that were concerned with that um, huge of an increase, and now this is well beyond that, almost twice what I had proposed. And uh, I, I'd, I'd be really afraid how that would um, if, if there was a if there was concern before I'd be really afraid of what it would do now to those larger users and the businesses and the university significantly. It's I mean my proposal would, would have increased theirs by about seventeen thousand. Theirs is going to be increasing the university by over twenty three about to, about to to twenty three thousand anyhow. So um, yeah, it's. It's significantly it, more. It's, Jim, it's 65 total for water and sewer for the college. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. It's it, massive. It's um, and, more, and that's yeah. and and my proposal that was turned down um, was worked out with our treasurer Alyssa, and and what what helped was was it did it did address some of the outside the village. Um, Sales because it increased it, that that proposal actually increased the outside the village sales more than this proposal does. So this proposal is actually putting a greater burden on the people within the village than helping getting the help from outside the village. So um, I felt that that this this particular um, these resolutions for call for public hearing um, should be rejected. And I think that, we're at the point, though, that we should let the public say what they would like to say. I mean, if they're not in support, then they'll say that. Well, I mean, you had quotes, quotes from the news from, from you know, that, from the people that were here that spoke out. Um, I, I can't imagine those, those would get any better. Well, and, and <laughs> many of them with, were speaking against removing the base fee. They were. No, they were not. That was not about removing the base fee. Their their, their concern was was the, the there, amount. Yeah, there uh, were businesses who were here who were just you know concerned about the amount in general. But most, if not all, I think the residents that were here were not in favor of removing the base fee. Well, because they didn't want that added on to their that cost on to the, a little bit a little bit more onto their cost. This goes well beyond that because you're adding more to the base fee on both the sewer and water, but you're at $5 per, uh, per base fee per quarter um, and um, on both. And you're raising it, the, the, the per thousand gallons by a dollar on both. Um, the, the significance of that is, is so great um, that um, I can't imagine that their answers would be any different um, just because you're adding, you know, you're not removing a base fee. Um, like I said, I was recouping those costs back to, from the, uh, outside the village sales, where we're supposed to be generating income. Um, a previous board, where I voted no to, um, on, a, on a change in the contract with the town, um, um, made it so that the village lost more than $180,000 a year in revenues. And uh, my, my proposal was to um, um, help recoup that and, and fix that issue. Um, and and uh, like I said, that was turned down. This does not address that issue. Actually, I mean, you'll get a slight more from the, from the town, but it puts more of the burden on the people of the village when I, I think it should be uh, recognize that the, the out, outside the village sales is supposed to help us. Um, so I I, this this particular proposal, I feel, is is just not um, in the best interest of the people. Um, and and also when when the previous proposal would have would have addressed the issue, um, um, it was worked out. You know that the, the treasurer felt that that could have could have handled the issue and, and now this this is a huge burden um, the, uh, the, ma the amount of increases I think is is, is uh, really um, unjust well then you know when this was first proposed by trustee bird I I thought and I still think that we should wait until we hear the engineers report 
because you know, hearing Erlissa tells us that at this point we're half a million dollars in the red, right? And this will make up a small part of it, right? Let's say we even do approve this and that puts us $300,000 in the red, right? That doesn't, that doesn't get to the heart of what the real problem is. Um, and I think until we get the engineer's report and we have a better understanding of what our water source will be um, than pricing it right now. And I know uh, Trustee Bird said, well, that's going to be a couple months down the road. And that's probably true, that it will be a couple months down the road, if not more. But I still think that, that we would be better off uh, waiting until we have that report from them. And I agreed that we should have a public hearing because I think the public deserves to know everything we're doing. And if they want to come in and talk about, you know, what what uh, Trustee Bird has proposed, then let's have the discussion. You know, there's there's no reason not to have it. Other, well, you know, except for I, I don't like it either. I mean, you're wasting yeah. the public's time. I don't on like something it either. That, but I, mean, I, the, I think the public deserves the right to voice their displeasure or their pleasure for it. I agree it's with not, that. It's not yeah. a waste of the public's time if they want to come in here and vote yay or nay on the thing. That's what they're here for. And quite frankly, if we don't take some kind of action, we're going to fall further into the hole. So we need to move forward in one direction somehow. So let's let the public speak on it. If they're against it, then you guys can vote against it. If they're for it, then we can vote for it. But let's see what they have to say. Just to do nothing and do no action doesn't make any sense whatsoever. We're just going to go further in the hole. Well, just based, based on the information given, it doesn't seem reasonable to even propose such a shut, such a um, increase. A large increase. I mean, it just the, just the whole notion that Jim, it doesn't seem reasonable that you didn't raise the water rates for the last seven years or six years. We have did, to do it, something. It, it the did. board did not raise the rates for six years. The cost they, of chlorine has gone once up again. 300%. They didn't, at that point, at that point, they didn't need to. Um, we we didn't just go five hundred thousand dollars in the hole in the last year. It didn't happen. It's it, this actually, has been going on for several years. Actually, it just went on. It, it did happen over the last couple a couple of years when since that contract happened, uh, one hundred and eighty over one hundred eighty thousand dollars loss to the um, from the town sales um, adds up quickly, um, and then of course increased costs. And there was some major expenses that went beyond what we had anticipated with with um, the repair at the. Um, uh, water treatment plant that went on way beyond the, what I had um, expected. So had the rates uh, so, been increased but, over this time? So, 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 yes, so, so yes, what you said, um, um, the, they had the appropriate rates um, at that time, and it did happen within a very short amount of time. Uh, so, so, so that is you're incorrect on that. It did happen very soon. So if there's an um, adjustment that needs to be made, it should be a reasonable adjustment. Um, not uh, even consider something of this magnitude um, when you were worried about the driving. I mean, you yourself you said stated that you were worried about driving businesses out of town. Well, this is um, <laughs> talk about driving something out of town. Dear God, um, you know this this is so significant. I, you know, I, I guess I would say, you know, so to if, propose if, such a thing, we should not even propose such. I, I think it'd be remiss of this board to to propose such a ridiculous. Um, it, it, when the, when, the when the resolution comes up in the meeting, if you want to uh, make a motion to table it, then make the motion. And if we agree to table it, we do. If not, we vote on it. And, you know, if there's going to be a public hearing, there's going to be one. But I think this board needs to understand that even <clears throat> with the town of Pomfret's uh, loss in revenues due to the decrease in the rates <coughs> that we are charging them, we still have significant losses. Uh, because of the increase in cost of producing it. And there is always the option to go with the North County Water District. The only thing is we have a viable, clean, pure water source that it, in the last study we did, it cost more to decommission it than it did to make the repairs. With this, when we produce water, we produce it, and when we have water main breaks or we have fires, we don't add those extra costs on to our consumers. If you go with the North County Water District, every ounce of water that comes in the village you pay for. And like I had explained at a couple different North County Water District meetings, that until we 
fix our infrastructure where when we have a 12 inch water main break and you lose a million gallons of water each time, that those water costs would be added on to every user's bill. And when we have fires and we use thousands or millions of gallons of water, those all, that, all that water. So these are many different things to consider, but we, we have a, ma a massive loss of revenue in our water system and either proposal really doesn't solve the problem because we're still roughly, even if, you, if we accepted Trustee Linden's proposal last time, we're still roughly 300 and some thousand dollars or so in the red in deficit. It didn't fix the problem. It kind of put a Band-Aid on a, a large cut that's still bleeding out and we need to figure out whether the public wants to you know, continue in the course we're going or, or move a different option. But I believe there's pros and cons to each uh, proposal. I think uh, what John did say was, was far, as far as uh, having the engineers look at that, um, uh, at that at this point that they probably should um, before this moves forward at any, even beyond, at, even from this point should not. Um, it, we should look at that first, but we also remember that there's um, a proposed um, uh, water district with the town that we'd be selling more water to if that if that en engineering study proves that we can do so um, that would increase revenues um, particularly um, like I said if, if, if the proposals were, were um, a proper proposal in my opinion um, so so that I mean, that could give us more generation of, of, of revenues um, hold on yeah or so if we do nothing for six months how much more money do we lose well, our prices of our chlorine and that are still going up, so I can't give you a finite so, number. But so we're, it's we're basically risking the chance of adding another 100000 200000 by being inactive for six months we're as opposed to doing something proactive and at least somewhat containing the problem. We're currently 172000 in the red for water and 230, 232000 for sewer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I'm I'm all for waiting for the engineer or getting an engineering study, but we cannot afford to wait. Well, we certainly we can. cannot we afford to wait we and have this can. bill go higher. That's just lunacy. I mean, that's that's like not paying a loan loan on your house and letting the interest compound and compound and compound and compound because you don't feel that you know you you should have to pay interest on the thing. I don't think we should just um, uh, you know. To, Pull the gun from the holster and and, and uh, something uh, with that with the, to shoot randomly at this with large numbers. Um, the I I think we should get a, a good a general idea from the, um, the engineers. engineers and and uh, yeah we do have funds that um, in reserve to cover us particularly in the in the wastewater. Um, we do have uh, a significant amount of reserves um, that can handle that um, amount of loss and. Um, this has been done in the past, um, and it's been done with the, with our tax base also. So, um, so just go ahead and, and moving this forward because you think that we need this money this second um, isn't a, a good reason to come up with, without a, a really good understanding of, of that amount and what um, how it affects our budget um, because we don't necessarily need to raise those kinds of increases. I think those are just astronomical. Jim, I've watched you cut $500 out of the budget because of minuscule things, and now you're not worried about $100,000. I just don't understand it. I say we move forward and let the let the community come in for a public hearing at this point and decide what's going to happen. If they're not for it, then we can discuss it. But what's the, what's the harm in following having a community meeting? We come here 30 minutes early. That's what we're paid to do. The public last time when you had your public hearing made their... Uh, opinion known and I think that this is also an opportunity to make their opinion known if the public does not want this increase in rates they'll let you the board know that this is inappropriate and you need to vote appropriately following your constituents uh, wishes so agreed but let's move forward yeah. we've uh, discussed this to very much here uh, approval of Alex Alexander Kurgan hire for fire department this is a part-time hire to fill the appointments that were uh, that had left previous um, and also approval of Robert Zacker for the fire department for part-time position any comments or questions on those two positions okay yep. and those two gentlemen I would assume I don't know this Robert Zacker 
Chief Myers, but is he fully trained and ready to rock and roll to go? Yes. Okay. So there's no there's no uh, cost for training. These uh, employees are ready to go. Okay. Approval of Joshua Bartok, hire for the Fredonia Police Department. This is replace the dispatcher who retired. Any comments, any questions? Approval of abstracts 641 to 644. Have those in your have those in your packets. Is there any comments or questions? Awesome. We'll move on to new business. Plaza Fifty Nine ex Extension Agreement. We the past board did approve a contract extension with the Town of Dunkirk and Plaza Fifty Nine for water extension contract for till twenty twenty five. A contract was never drawn up. That was at the time where we. Uh, we're in the swapping of uh, attorneys from our village attorney to the firm we have now, and that just needs to be done. Basically, it's the front page to amend it to show that the contract's extended to 2025. All the rest of the contents of the contract are the same as before. You know, we might want to take a look at that language because we assume that when we amended the contract with Pomfret Correct. and they didn't understand it, Apparently, they're reading it differently than we are reading it, so maybe we need to be a little more precise with this amendment. I could reach out to the town, East Town of Dunkirk okay. or Town Dunkirk Supervisor Pearl yeah. to make sure that he uh, understands all the terms and conditions of the past contract, and this will just be an amendment. Yeah, I just don't want to get frame. the same. Uh, Alyssa, is, are you aware of any billing issues with that contract? The plus, yeah. no, there has not been. And um, so it's, it's been going satisfactorily. Okay. Um, I, I mean, our, our attorneys should review it, though. Our attorneys should review it, and, and so should you should get that same that answer. Yeah. I, I agree. Yep. All right. Was there any other new business? Um, yes. Can we, I guess not reinstate, but make sure that we're following our three and five minute. Um, Guidelines for, for public comment. Public, yes, for public comment. I, I have no problem with that. Read that. I'll read that tonight. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. I was approached by a uh, um, guy that uh, drives a bus in the village of Fredonia, and he asked if it would be possible when he's turning left onto Cleveland from Orchard, if there's a vehicle parked at the oh, southeast corner of Cleveland, he can't make that turn. So he has to make a partial turn and back up and he's stopping traffic. So he said if there could be a, a no standing or no parking spot just in the corner, just during school hours or whatever, that it would have, and he said in, in winter it's particularly difficult. Chief Price, do you know the sign is there? Would you mind checking that out? And if it needs to be moved down for no parking, if that could be, uh, Scott, you could uh, understand that. And, I'll get with Scott. All right, thank do, you. Do you know the corner I'm talking about, Scott? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can see a bus trying to make a wide turn there if it's a So you're saying on Cleveland? He's turning from Orchard. He's making a left down to Cleveland. Yeah. Okay. And so if there's a car oh, there, there he's yeah. unable to make that turn. So he's turning north towards Main Street on to yes. Cleveland from? Yeah. yeah. Orchard. Okay. Right. Any other new business? Um, yes, I did see uh, a suggestion in the newspaper by a resident in the city of Jamestown, and she'd like to bring Sandy Baker, the deer doctor, in to help control the deer population into Jamestown. And the cost is $500 plus traveling expenses. And she made a comment, perhaps maybe this village of Fredonia in the city of Jamestown could share in this cost. And I just wanted to know if anybody was interested in maybe having her come. What does she, what does she do? More. Well, um, she's advocating for more effective deterrence um, and measures to be put in place to alleviate the issues while protecting the wildlife population in the area. I know um, people didn't like the idea of, you know, hunting the deer and you know I, I looked at her website and she has a lot of great ideas I, I mean maybe people can just learn enough from that but 
but if we wanted to do this, you know, to educate the public on um, her approach to uh, trying to keep the deer out of your yard, I, I thought maybe it would be worth looking into, and I wanted to know what the other trustees thought of that. I could get more information if you'd be interested. Yeah, more information. The, okay. the problem has not gone away. No, it hasn't, Because we Jack. refuse to do anything about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, and I, I thought maybe this is, you know, a better way of handling it because, you know, it, as we all found out, nobody wanted to hunt, have the deer hunted, and maybe by this approach we could try to um, deter uh, a lot of the deer that are uh, giving people problems. So I could look into this and report at the next meeting if you'd like. Do you, do you have her what her web information? Um, I don't have it in front of me, but her name is Sandy Baker, the deer doctor. I'll I'll get a copy of that I'll, later. Okay. I'll talk to you about right. it. Yeah. B a k e r. I'm sorry. What's that? B a k e r. B a k e r. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Sandy. Sandy Baker. Mm -hmm. So it might be worth looking into. I just thought maybe it would be a different approach mm -hmm. to controlling the deer. Thank you. Is there any other new You're business? Welcome. Okay, we'll move on to old business. Electrical quote for Barker Common circuit breakers. There's a row of lights on Barker Common by the Russell building side there that are all on one or two circuits that when our vendors, whether it be the farm festival or food trucks, go on it, they blow all the breakers and end up replacing breakers, I think, every time. Outlets. Outlets. Yeah, there was, GFI I, outlets. I, I noticed, I noticed the, all those new ones all the way around the entire That's right. um, That's West nice. Park where, are, nice. have been out for quite a while now. Yeah, they're, under, they're undersized. You plug two things into them and they blow. Even the ones on yeah, they're all side. Yeah, they're well. They're whatever. on one circuit instead of every pole. Yeah, it's just you know. when they, when they were wired them, they put too many things on on right. the plugs, and, and <coughs> you plug two things in and it blows. I read the thing. It's there. just inadequate for anything we want to do basically down there. So Scott, the proposal from Beck Electric does that upgrade the amperage for the outlets and the circuits? Yes, both of them. So. What was going on, and they said we upgrade the outlets and the breakers. Because I mean, if you still put 20 amp GFIs in there, and the food trucks are drawing too much more energy than that, they're going to blow those regardless of whether you keep replacing them with 20 amp. So I hope that I don't know what's the requirement for like is it mostly the food trucks that are blowing them out? I think so. Yeah, I mean, he seemed pretty confident of doing this upgrade. Correct I, you know, I guess we can maybe test one, have them do one strip, and we can always test them too to see what it would take a blow shot or whatever. We have to do something though, they're just not adequate for, for anything we want to do down there right now, really. I mean, when right. the electricians should know that, they should know how to calculate those figures. Of, yeah. of, I mean, that's, that's... This was all in the plans I mean, for the project. It was all newly installed, approved by engineers. Um, they just put in what they respect to put in. Now, have issues, so. I don't think those outlets were ever thought of when they were put in to run food trucks. I think they were put in to run uh, Christmas tree lights and lights for decoration, you know, for whatever season or holiday. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what I'm guessing that was put in there. 20 amp uh, GFIs should handle lights and most things. But again, there's there's so five or six clearly, poles on one thing, so clearly something has mm -hmm. to be done, and, yeah. and, and they said that that would solve it. Yeah, that's yep. what you said. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we do have money in. Um, how is how's the proposal to be just to be paid <laughs> well, for? <laughs> well, I, I know I, I just wanted to make sure. Talk to our Alyssa and, and right and Caleb. You know, see. Yeah. Money it looks like I was project. just looking at it. It looks mm -hmm. like if we move some around, we'd be fine. Okay. We could do that within the current okay. department's you. budgets. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Is that something then that the board would like to move forward with a resolution for the next yes, meeting? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, definitely. Yes. We don't need a resolution for the oh, other true. than the budget transfer. The transfers. Transfers. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, but you're right. Transfer. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Yeah. It's uh, 
It's nothing we have to do in the next month or two, though, either, because we're not really doing any. You got Miracle on Main Street. That's it. Yeah, Miracle on Main yeah. Street. Yeah, it's coming out. Yeah, it should be. Good. I think that they're aware of it now, so we kind of, you know, I can. Yeah. Get through it. Get it done. Yeah, if they're ready to do just it, get let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, if we got the money and do it, yeah, but I'm just saying it's not a. I don't think it's an emergency at all. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Scott. Scott, a quick question. Yeah. A quick question on the street lights, Matt. Have, have you been uh, able to have a contractor then replace some of the out, out lights that have been reported yeah. out? So we far? don't have any burned out street lights at the moment. Okay. Okay. Siemens actually moved into our shop. They're starting to do our interior lights, and he said within the month they're going to get on the street lights. So, yeah, I've been calling back to. You know, fix the burned out ones because it's, it's that time of year. It's a safety hazard. So. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Number two, the solar project with Siemens. Uh, as I stated in the last meeting, that was a done deal because of a couple different things. A uh, setback that the town of Pomfret had proposed, a 250-foot yeah. setback that's needed. And I see in our package, I don't know if you got it, but I had gotten a uh, some literature on some new projects that are solar projects. And I'm not sure how those are going to happen within Chautauqua County if, if the grid is almost full of uh, being able to... I brought, I brought that up for, um, because I spoke with John Parch from Siemens, mm -hmm. and um, he said that currently the, the county isn't at the peak of uh, green energy, energy being put into the grid, so he thought that it would be worthwhile to um, put a, proposal, a request in. Um, I, and the reason I gave you this other um, packet today for the, um, was that there's a Canadian firm. This was um, in the news on October 25th. Um, Canadian firm that's going that's looking to put in the stock in Pomfret area, um, utilizing 54 acres for a, a 10 megawatt um, solar field. And, and my thought being is that, that we shouldn't put, as a village of taxpayers, um, into the village shouldn't put ours on hold for something from uh, from uh, from Ontario. Um, that, that the county should um, consider us first. Um, our our they're also requesting a <laughs> um, hundred thousand dollars in in mortgage recording tax breaks and um, uh, also um, uh, pilot program a massive pilot program on top of that um, in lieu of taxes. Uh, and uh, so, but the village doesn't, we don't receive anything on that property because um, it's village owned um, and it wouldn't require a, a pilot program or any kind of uh, tax relief on that, pro on that piece of property. And the village, as we know, clearly needs revenues. Um, this would, um, at, on the smaller size as Siemens um, uh, proposed, Oh, it was a two, a two megawatt um, field. Um, uh, there's 43 acres in, the, in that one lot that we have. We have we have a, a, quite a few acres. Um, uh, um, I think it's darn near close, to a couple hundred acres up there. Um, but anyhow, this one lot, one lot that's, that they proposed was 43 acres, um, which they with that uh, two megawatt um, would um, so would actually generate slightly more than that per year. Um, would give us revenues of about ten thousand dollars a year, which is probably more than we would have gotten even if we sold the property, um, uh, if if we were to. But I don't think that was ever the intention of the village. So th this would create a, rev a revenue f um, that's desperately needed for the village, and then takes some of that burden off the taxpayers. Um, so we're looking at the clean energy. That's what the state's been requesting of us. Um, I, th I think that we should look um, have. John Petsch and his um, engineers looked further into it. He said he'd like to, um, maybe willing to and, and willing to put that proposal forward. And uh, um, the other concern was was that, um, as you mentioned, that the setback from the town um, that's a that's a town requirement um, um, at this point. Um, this is village owned uh, property with the border of, of the village, just like we are down here. Um, we, with respect to those borders, 
Um, we can uh, we we can notify them of what we're going to do, but we don't have to um, um, take into consideration fully that um, that request that there has to be 250 foot setback. You um, know this for the, fact by our attorneys or how? Do well, we I was well fact? when I was on when I was on I was a member of the planning board and I and I um, was uh, went to education from the state. Um, um, at a program at Houghton College, and that was one of the statements um, that we, um, within the village, uh, with, within a community, you have your borders, and um, they don't, dic they can't dictate what happens within our borders, and that's a village-owned property. It has, a, it is a village, um, and no different than this is village. So we could go up to our borders. Um, we can go right up to it, but of course, they, the Siemens would take that into consideration and keep it back as far as they um, possibly could, according to John Parch. Um, and that there, are, there is also currently a, a type of a bit of a berm up there already, so you no, wouldn't necessarily, may not even necessarily even see it from the road. Um, so um, he thought that would be a good opportunity to, to um, consider that again. Um, uh, there's a um, solar field that's going up on, um, what is that, uh, not, not Barry Road, uh, uh, Van, Buren, Van Buren Road right now. That's within 500 feet of the village property, but that's in town. Um, so, I, um, and that's, um, as far as um, the towns, um, what you mentioned, um, the setback in the town, that was um, from, from, they're requesting from the, from the road in. Um, I don't. I don't believe it's from every border uh, of the property. Um, but that's the way I, the way I read it. Um, so I would think that I'd like to have the board uh, reconsider this um, with with um, Siemens to go further and do a little more research. Jan Perch said that he would. I was hoping he would have more information to, by today, but he didn't get back to me yet. But he felt that um, it was worthwhile looking having his uh, team look further into this and then um, making the proposal and that so we could possibly have this um, uh, ability to connect to the grid awarded to us. That's interesting. I just wondered what had changed since the conversation I had with them about a month ago. And, you know, I, I don't know for sure. I, if they want to, his thought at the time was it wasn't worth their time and energy and money to consider moving forward if in fact National Grid had told the county that the grid is being almost at its near capacity. I don't know what if it is not or now or when, right. but if uh, at the time John was very uh, uh, very precise in telling me that he didn't think that this was uh, feasible at this time because of those two things. Now, if you're for sure, if, if you're for sure that it might be a possibility of 250 mm -hmm. foot setback based on that being village property and they have no jurisdiction to dictate that. If, if uh, Siemens would like to look into that even more, I have no issue with that. But at the time, I can tell you that Siemens said that it was not a possibility and that we, they didn't want to continue moving forward, wasting their time, energy, yeah. and resources. So. We, we, did, we did this. We, we, yeah. he, just, he mentioned, he, he brought that all up to me about your discussion. Yeah, he did. Um, so if we're willing to move so he, forward, he, that's great. He thought I that this, to, I'm not against what, this. I'm not against Siemens looking forward and moving forward on it. But do we need to, or should we open it up to anybody that's looking to possibly do this to see if there's a better deal offered to us on this thing? I mean, Siemens is one proposal, but maybe we need to open this up to. I mean, there's six or seven of these different ones being built, and I can't imagine they're all being done by Siemens right now. Should we should we explore the opportunity to see who can offer us what? I mean, if Siemens is ten thousand, somebody may have twenty thousand, or maybe Siemens is the best. We don't know that right now. It's well, just one offer. Siemens didn't didn't appear like they were interested in going ahead. So, you know, my well, personal well, feeling would be if there's an organization that wants to undertake it, there's no cost to us. You know, if they do investigation and it turns out they can't do it, we're out nothing. Right. So I would rather. I, mean, I don't want to wait too long because yeah. if if in fact it, it is nearing um, the capacity, yeah. Yeah. Um, which. I mean, I, I would like to think that they, the, um, a village or a community within our county with the taxpayers would have preference over an outside firm yeah. coming into our county. 
Yeah, I'd be in favor of having him. So do I don't want to waste too much time on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I certainly would like to see if we could. I'm for it. I just think we need to, or we should offer it to, you know. Well, then, uh, multiple people if they want to look at it. Well, then, you know, Siemens should then um, move forward with their proposal. Um, this is just as anyone else then. Yeah. Yep. With, with no um, Do we have to put that out to... It's, it's no cost. There's not like a price on it. So no. there's no, nothing, it doesn't require procurement policy. No. Procedures. I think if we wanted to reach out, we would just have to look for others who yeah. do it and tell them what we're looking at. Yeah, because so. yeah, there was no cost to us. Right. That, yeah. that was that was the nice thing about this. I mean, to create revenues without no cost out of pocket. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all village. for it. I just think we should, there, we may have more options at no cost and with higher revenue. So if not, then we okay. move forward with Siemens. If they yeah, that would, be, that would be fine if, if, yeah. if, if, that's, if you could do that. Good, thank you. You want to have that conversation then with John Parsh? You know, you just had that with them and let them know that I, yeah, I, the I'll board is in favor of if they want to pursue this at their own cost and, and time. Uh, that, you know, that's what they proposed initially, so I yep. think I'm going to, I'll definitely call in. I'm just confused of what changed between the conversation a month ago and, and to now that all of a sudden there's possibilities of future uh, putting into the grid and we don't have to worry about the 250 foot setback. I would be more... I'm kind of leery to fully say that's for sure unless somebody, if they want to do the investigation legal-wise and, and understand it legal, they, have they, at it. They said that they were interested in doing that. Okay, sounds good. Let's move forward. Opera House Loading Dock. Uh, yes, I uh, spoke with Alyssa about this and Scott, and um, right now it just doesn't seem like we have the money to do it. And... Uh, Scott, would, would we be able to wait until next budget year? Yeah, the contract. Do you think it's safe? They said that they probably wouldn't get to it until the spring anyways. So. Okay. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And also, Alyssa said there's a possibility that we could get some grants to do this work. So we'll also look into that. So we'll put this on hold right now, but we'll look into getting grant money and doing it in our next budget. Okay. Thank you. I'm trying to think if that was part of the uh, New York Forward, whether we had any part. I, I, there might have been uh, parts of that a proposal that included the loading dock, I think. I'll have to take a look back at the grant that we, uh, application that we had proposed to the uh, ESD. Mm -hmm. So it might already be part, might be hof uh, hopefully included in that already. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Key fob on office door. I'm assuming that's the personnel special or the door leading to the clerk's Clerk office. office. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so um, they had discussed maybe doing this um, in addition to the door being placed on um, the personnel specialist's office, um, just so it's a little bit more secure and, and they know who's going into those offices because everybody has access as a master key. Um, well, if everybody has access, then why shouldn't they be allowed to go in there? They, they everybody's, al everybody's allowed to go in there. They just... Well, you can still go in the back door, though, couldn't you? They, a, they would like to room. then change that lock so that way anybody just who has a master key has to go in through the... Um, you can't go from the yeah. You can't go from the trustee room into their offices. You'd have to go out into the hallway and in the main door. Um, obviously, they would have a key to get between the two rooms. But. So explain to me. I just so I understand. What's the goal of having this in that door, not the other? In addition to securing the personnel specialist door, what they uh, actual you know actual door. I, it was just a request that was brought to me. Okay. I just, I think it's when you can have access in through the other office and there are... That, that access would be removed, though. The I'll master key would not work for the new lock in that so door would in have, between. So would have... Yeah. The clerk. Just the clerk. Yeah. 
so let me ask you this. So somebody who has a master key already mm -hmm. can enter that door without using a fob, and you still don't have a record of who's in there. Because I can use my master key to the Opera House door on Temple Street and not use the fob and come in. Correct. And I still don't know I'm in because I have a master key. Unless we removed that lock. I think when people have master keys out right now, I think it, it just creates, I, I don't think, I'm not sure it fully fulfills what is wanted the uh, fob to do. Unless you fob every door and everybody just uses fobs and not keys. Uh, I'm not really sure that this really makes sense to me, but that's for the board to consider. I'm, I'm not sure what problem we're trying to solve. I'm not sure, I don't know if, I, yeah, I have not, not sure. heard that there was an issue before this. And, and I guess I would say if, if, we're, if someone that currently has a key, if we're trying to keep them out, then, then there's a bigger problem. Right? <laughs> that someone that shouldn't have a key yep. has right. one. Right. So that's the problem, if there is one. Yeah, I would like to know exactly why you know, knowing who comes in and out, if, you know, are things being stolen, or we have uh, damage being done, or, you know, are records being looked into that we don't know about? I don't know. I, just to have a request put in for 1800. On when they came in the next morning, I think that was part of the issue. Say this again? Their computers were on like somebody was trying to get into their computers. Okay. I did. So... Those are all password protected, though, as far as yeah. Right. As long as they're shutting but down every night, they're password protected. But still, just thought that somebody was trying to get into your computer. Okay, so that goes back to my I first think, thought. <laughs> yeah. Someone shouldn't have a key to get in there, then. Right, right. Well, you know, and, it, and she's locking up her keyboard in her secure true. space anyway. Right. What difference does it make? Mm -hmm. you spend eighteen hundred dollars so she can lock that thing up. So, whose computers were being uh, the clerk or your computer? One tampered. time mine was on, and, and I don't know how many times Michelle's was found on, but huh. or the, the personnel specialist was found mm -hmm. on. Hasn't been a problem since. For okay. me. Well, let's if just, we secure the personnel specialist's mm -hmm. office, this would not be an issue anyhow. Sure. And the way I had explained it uh, to the clerk was that, same with my office, I have a separate key and the clerk has a key and the clerk can have a key to the personnel specialist office in case there's an emergency mm -hmm. you have to get in. But otherwise, those only are accessed by those individuals having those offices. So unless the clerk has issues and, and problems with their office out that way and anything before you get to the personnel specialist office, I really don't see a, a need for that at this time unless you want to uh, look at who has keys, who has the master keys, and who has keys to those individual doors, too. And, uh, you know. I, I, I just say we monitor it at this point and see if it I becomes the, an issue. I have the information of who has keys. I can get that. Yeah, I, I, I don't see there's any point in taking action. We can just monitor and if it becomes a problem, then we can look more into it. Okay. Uh, the, I asked, uh, Mark Ugliami, our attorney who's handling the contracts about the SUNY Fredonia contract, they're still waiting on the state to make their decision on that. The state, <laughs> I'm assuming probably after November 8th, we might have an answer. I don't know. It's, it's been a year. I don't know. Anyway. Maybe after elections, maybe we can get some answers see. here, but this is kind of frustrating. Mm -hmm. yep. Is there any other old business? Yeah, I just have one thing. <clears throat> so at the last meeting, we talked about One Temple Square, and there was a letter um, produced, and you signed it was sent out, correct? That's correct. So going forward, if there is a complaint, then there would be a um, letter or a warning going out to the owners of the property, correct? That's the next step. Correct. Okay, so they receive the letter, then what? They're... Chuck, if a what, person's what, what violation of ordinances, uh, are they required to come to court? Is a court appearance ticket? No, not at first. It was not a, not a warning letter. It was a mm -hmm. violation letter. Okay. And give them three days or whatever the law um, suggests. When, when I drove through there on Saturday, they were sitting out in the middle of the sidewalk. So I tried to call the owner and he's ignored me. 
Yeah. So, okay. Well, you know, he, he could ignore you only one, I and mean, maybe it's time to start fining him. And so, if, if he gets, if he's, if there's a fine and he doesn't pay it, does that get added onto his taxes? No. Somehow, it just. No. no. Really? They just keep adding up. Oh um, no! The judge is going to get the fine or jail. Right. Okay. If he doesn't comply with the order, the judge has the right. Okay. To so, so it's nothing. He needs jail. Okay. Because you know, I'll have to say I know that it seems like a uh, <coughs> petty thing, but at our last event, we had people there, residents that are having a very hard time with it that live in that area, and one resident is thinking about moving because it's so bad. He's he said that he knows that his the value of his home has gone down, um, so he's looking to move. So it is a problem for the residents right. up and down Center Street. And they're right by the playground yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, it's an issue for anybody who's trying to get to that playground. I yeah. mean, I'm mm -hmm. pushing a stroller and That's I have to right. run to the street yeah. or across the street. So if that was one of our residents, if that was one of our homes and we knew that our home values were dropping, We'd want something right. done, and so we owe it to them to take action on it. So, so Chuck, start the paperwork flowing, and okay. give them the warnings and and the summonses to appear in court. Okay. Is there any other old business? Chip, we have a few minutes here before our next meeting, so before our meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia regular meeting. Call this meeting to order on Monday, October 31st, 2022 at 7.30 p.m. We'll have a roll call of the trustees. Trustee Linden. Here. Trustee Twitchell. Here. Trustee Bird. Here. Trustee Syracuse. Here. Trustee Esperson. Here. Would we'll please all stand now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Well, the public portion now, please. This portion of the meeting is for public comment. Any member of the public wishing to speak once recognized shall stand at the microphone and state their name and address. Speakers will be allowed three minutes if speaking for themselves or five minutes if speaking on behalf of a group. I will ask the speakers to refrain from remarks that are in poor taste slanderous or not germane to any action taken or contemplated by the board. If there is anyone that would like to address the board, please step up to the podium, state your name and address, and yeah. give your comments, please. Sir, could you remove your hat, please? Thank you. Is there a problem? I'm just asking you to remove your hat. I prefer to wear it, actually. I got a bald head. Okay, my name is Gus Pockovic. I reside at 140 Porter Road. I've been a resident in this village for 40 years and own property, houses. Um, and I, first, I'd like to thank uh, these three uh, trustees over here. They were very, uh, we communicated, texted, and, and emailed each other, and they were uh, answered the phone. Um, I, I appreciate that. Mayor, I called you seven times, and I never received a phone return phone call back. And I was kind of wondering why. But anyway, so some of the part of the communication was I, I foiled back in September 19th, uh, and my foil was answered on, on proper timing, uh, October 20th, but it wasn't completely uh, the information I needed. I, I, I wanted the foil information for the coverage for everybody that's in the market, and I realized it's a group, but the group still has to go out and buy their individual besides the farmer's market has part of the insurance for the property end of it. If there's any destruction to the property or anything, the other part of the group is supposed to buy their own million dollar deal, somebody chokes or whatever, for liability reasons. Well, it, the, the policy did say blanket on it, but there's supposed to be a name attached to who's on that blanket because the market changes from uh, week to week. There's new vendors come and go, and they, they can actually opt to go 
this week, but not next week. So it you know, would be helpful for liability from the village. And also, on, on what I noticed, it was kind of suspicious, is on the market one from, from the farmer's market, the form, the certificate of insurance in the left-hand corner is supposed to have where it's sent to, like the village of Fredonia. Uh, when, I, when I send out my things, I call my insurance company up, tell them, hey, look, I need one sent to the village, I need one sent to the city of Dunkirk, and they're addressed just like that. And what that does, it's kind of like a blanket to protect the village that if they lapse their insurance, you guys get a notice directly. I mean, it comes within like three days. Their insurance has lapsed, and they're no longer in good standing with insurance. That's why I stress that. And I wasn't sure. I got an answer back from the clerk that said, oh, it's not, it's not up to us. Well, yes, it is up to the board and the village and everybody because you're protecting the real residents. Okay, and the other thing I'd like to bring up real quick is, um, again, I'm going to address this question. I'd like to... To Miss Witchell about. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, what was it? What, what do you mean? What I say? Oh, I'm going to address it to you because you're the liaison between the market and the uh, village board, correct? Okay. So uh, I have. A, I, first of all, I'm probably the only village resident that's out in the park. Okay. I don't think there's anybody else out there that's. They're from Pofford. Mr. Pocketed, that's three minutes, sir. Well, I know, but uh, Mr. DeGuerre took eight no, minutes and 44 minutes. seconds last okay. Well, we're starting this new three. Okay, well, here's the deal. Can you finish you, it up in you one have sentence? To you, down, yeah. Okay, you, you, you know the law that was made. Why do I keep getting harassed, and why do the police have to keep coming and, and, and like, like I'm doing something wrong? I have a, I have a permit now, okay? I think you okay. understand the law. I, I think okay. The time's up at yep. this point. You understand the law. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? <clears throat> My name is Rachel Cunningham, and I'm actually a village uh, resident of Westfield. And uh, my son is a college student here. He's a senior on the dean's list for the last couple of years. And I have addressed um, police misconduct with this board about eight months ago, and I'm going to play this, and while it might be not be pleasant for you, it was not pleasant for our I experience. I think we have to yes. interrupt you. Yes. We, we if, can't this, if this, ma'am, ma'am, can't play that. Ma can't play that. It's no. a this, if this, no. Excuse me one second. Personal matters are not uh, an appropriate subject It's not public. a personal matter. This affects this community. It affects every single college student. Personnel matters are not appropriate subject for public I'm not comment. speaking about personnel. I'm talking about behaviors that affect. And it's are you personnel. playing a tape of so you can't. village employees? That's personnel. This is not matter that is so you want to shut it down because you don't want to address it is that what you're saying i am telling you right now mrs miss cunningham personal matters are not of appropriate subject for public comment if you want to be generic in your statements and and state something of not personal matters you're free to do so i will be generic in my statement then this is going to go for um everybody and maybe i'll approach i'll i'll leave it over to this way um, Terry B. Ohio, whenever a police officer accosts an individual and restrains his freedom to walk away, he has seized that person. January 29th, that was uh, done uh, to a college student. Um, that's um, considered unlawful police detention, and that is when law enforcement, without legal justification, restricts a person's freedom to leave. Uh, Sixth Amendment violations. Uh, that occurred with college students in this town with uh, our police are within two minutes of stopped. If you ask for an attorney, what happens after that? You leave the person alone because they've asked for an attorney. That was also something that was restricted. Um, the Fifth Amendment, which is against self-incrimination, this is for people who are guilty or innocent. But it, um, so, in other words, we're going to talk about Miranda rights um, and questioning that took place after Miranda rights were not read. You know, Miranda actually was a rapist and a murderer that got off because he wasn't read his Miranda rights. Um, how about the 14th Amendment? It's equal protection of the law. Um, 
So if you're e illegally detained because of a uh, description that doesn't match you except for your race, you should probably consider that. Ms. Cunningham, that's three minutes. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Cunningham. But you Ms. said Cunningham. if I'm talking on behalf of others, I had five minutes. Who are you talking on behalf of? Um, Fredonia students. And Fredonia citizens. You're, you're not, I'm you're, a Fredonia. You're I not talking on behalf am. of a specific group. Uh, Ms. Cunningham, the board is in receipt of your email. And if there's any, if there's well, any need, like if there's any need to contact you, a designee will do so at the board's discretion. Well, well let's talk about that real quick. No, Nate, we've handled Ms. Cunningham. Our lawyer, Excuse so me, oh, guys. We can't talk about this. Michelle, please. Ms. Cunningham, your three minutes is up, and you'll be asked to leave if you do not sit down and leave the podium. I plan on leaving after this anyways, trust me. Thank you. You just don't want to face the facts of what's going on in the police corruption. Thank you, Ms. Cunningham. That's enough. Thank you. Does anybody else like to address the board? Hello, my name is Anthony Mancuso, owner of Mancuso Service Center in Fredonia. Uh, I would like to address the board today on a test well that uh, I had put in, put in by MK Well Drillers. Uh, this is a test well that was filed by MK and it had the DEC permit, it had the safe dig and sign off by the village of Fredonia. And this is a well to see if it can, if it's sustainable to help the co my cost of doing business for the car wash. Um, I was stopped on that process stating I did not have a building permit. Um, the company I hired was not familiar that a building permit is needed for a test well. Um, I do know that there will be a permit needed to go further. And I am not at that point yet. I'm trying to gather my information at this point. So I am asking the board on advice, I guess, on where I go next. And I'd like to leave some information with you on my permit and empty well drillers. Do, do I, um, and who would I speak to about the information that I would need and the laws at that point that for this? Our code enforcement officer, Mr. LaBarbera. Okay. And can I give you these, uh, this uh, information at this time? I got one from you, actually. Yeah. Yep. And, um, well, as of right now, we just did the test well to see if it's feasible. And it is to some extent. So our next step is to pay for pumps, pay for metering the sewer, and no cross connection or anything of that sort to the village water. That's stated in Mr. Emke's letter as well. Um, our system does not allow cross connection because we do have containments. Uh, when the village water comes in, it drops in water containments, barrels. Well would be the same drop in a barrel as needed, and it goes to the car wash at that point. This is non-potable water. You cannot access it, you cannot drink it, you can't get to it at any, any point. Um, I am aware though it needs to be metered due to sewer because that, that is a service. And we're not looking to avoid that at this point at all. Um, that was not our intentions. Our intentions is to continue doing business and Trying to save a little bit of money at the, at the process. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me give this survey. I got one for the secretary. Too. Yes, that would be great. I know we haven't encountered this before. This is something of new nature, per se. So we need to look into what regulations and requirements are to be needed. I, I did. I did look a little bit in the law, and it, there is there is nothing saying that you can't have. They don't call it a well. They call it auxiliary water supply, which can be a pond, a creek, anything of that sort, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, they don't call it a well. Um, there's nothing about digging, preventing you to dig a well. There is about sewer though. You can't drop it within 200 feet of, of a water supply. That's in the law. Yep. So I just wanna be up front and yep. where I'm going from here. Okay. okay, sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Anthony. I think it's more of a lot of us needing to understand what the Thanks. laws and regulations are 
Well, I, I you did, may know what they are. I, I did do my research before. Sure. I don't want to dig on a piece of property and not know what, what I'm getting involved in. And the whole purpose of it was to see if it's feasible as well. You know, it makes sense. So. Yeah. You know, um, there is the cost for my Thank you, sir. on my uh, what I spent already in there as well. Okay. And capital improvement. But at this point, I would like to know if I can finish capping it off so it's safe for all public to walk around. I, I had gotten approval on that. It's, just, it's an open. It's open. An open well right now. Yeah, it's open right now. How many? Sticking out of the ground. How many inch top? Well, it's a six inch, six inch pipe that's this high out of the ground, and there's a hole there. I need to get it down and covered, so it's safe. But we were asked to stop. We, we were asked. To, we were told to stop. We weren't really asked. We were. We were told. <laughs> Can I? He was told to stop because the plumbing code of New York says that the wheel drill driller has to give me all the DEC permits. I have to give a building permit. Whether he believes that I don't or not, New York State Building Code says if you're doing it well, I need to have the DEC approvals in hand. I need to have the contractor's workman's comp, general liability, and disability insurance. I have none of that. So that, that's why he was stopped. Okay. So at this point, I, I need to get some of those documents over to get, the get them to truck and to cover up. To get cover them to truck and. We do have the DEC in there. Yeah, but he had said comp, workman's comp. Okay. I do not have that in that. I need all his insurance. Yeah, we'll uh, get you that. Because he's a contractor working in this village. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, so it's more of a problem of just not getting all the paperwork. Into the right hands, and and, and, so. and in my in my defense, I didn't. I hired. You're not a, yeah, you're I not hired a company to handle this. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it, what what I guess I'm trying to say is it's not. It's Chuck's following his letter of the law. And, Absolutely, and, and, and we had spoken, and and yeah. I understand where he stands, and I think he knows where I stand on it, and yeah. we're agreeing. And I just, I think what I'll do is I'll contact Chuck tomorrow, and I think everything he wants to be settled up with that. That's that, that's fair. Right now, at this point, the village has to give me permission to give him a permit because he's going to be tying into our sewer and stuff. Wait, I'm not. So it's not much further than that, right? Electrical's got to be done. He's got to tie into our system. There's a backflow preventer that has to be installed that um, the water department will inspect. So, I mean, there's, there's things that are going to follow suit. It's just not a permit for them to drill the well. It's, the whole um, project. That's correct. But I didn't want to put the cart before the horse. I wanted to see if there's water there. To start doing permits on a whole scope of project and not have that is correct. And we will have to give our plans on how this will be handled and how it should be handled. Correct. So it sounds like a chunk you could in detail outline exactly what's needed and if you could provide that I think the board would be amenable to moving forward on that as far as I can see so could that all be done possibly uh, by the next meeting and either Chuck could give us a report or if you'd like to come back as well or whatever one way or another the board would find out within probably a whole two weeks maybe or maybe I, mean, I think the, the review has to be subject to make sure that it applies to all the village laws um, um, Chuck is going to review the, all those mm -hmm. and at the next board meeting yeah, that would give us a report whether it's okay to move forward or not and if you received all the paperwork then Mr. Can, make you so my, my only concern is we do have a six inch open pipe on there can we give him at least permission to cap the well Cap. It's it capped. It is capped. Oh, it is capped now? It's, it's, it's a still hole around it. Yeah, I want to go down flush so no kids. Okay, so right now it is capped though and it's safe. It is capped. Okay. And I got a drum over it and cones and everything. Okay. But so, I, I so, don't. It's, so it okay. is safe. Okay. I, want it, I want it down and covered. That, that, yeah, okay. As soon as you can. So do we have the ability to do that now? Yeah. I, that, I can't say that. I was just, if it, if it wasn't safe, I would say we, we would have to. But as long as it's safe, I mean. If it's below grade, it's not yet. Oh, I told you you could do that. Okay, I just, I just, just want, I just want it on record that I can do that. Yeah, just make it safe for and now. Then, but don't, don't hook up anything. And, and that's we'll correct. We'll need some plans on. That's correct. What yeah. you're doing and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Sounds like we're on the same Sounds page. Sounds Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you guys have a great Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you.
Is there anyone gentlemen? else from the public who would like to address the board? Please step forward to the podium. Hi, my name is Susan Parker. I'm a county legislator for uh, the village, half of the village that includes Route 20 that is being considered for the um, speed reduction. I, uh, I, you're not having a hearing. I've come to find, um, and but I thought I would say what I wanted to say anyway, and then if there is a hearing, I can come back. One of the things that um, it's my understanding that the first step for the village is to ask the New York State DOT for a speed study and reduction of the speed limit. It's helpful to be able to speak to the speed limit change, so it might be included in the request. That's what I was hoping. Um, what we know already is that the speed limit in the school safety zone can be reduced to 15 miles per hour and that in a village uh, local speed limits can be reduced to 25 miles per hour with the new law and also that the DOT needs to be uh, do a speed study to consider the speed reduction. I'm supportive of this because other things that we know are that lower speed limits reduce traffic fatalities and serious injuries. The United States Department of Transportation Office of Highway Safety reports that the chance of a pedestrian being seriously injured or killed if struck by a car going 40 miles per hour is 85%. The chance of a pedestrian being seriously injured or killed if struck by a car is traveling 30 miles per hour is 45%. The chance of a pedestrian being seriously injured or killed if the speed is reduced to 20 miles per hour as is proposed for the uh, school safety zone, it is reduced to 5%. So that would make a huge difference for the safety of our pedestrians in particular near the schools. Um, government research shows that 20 miles per hour zones reduce the incidence of traffic accidents by 60% and cut child pedestrian and child cyclist accidents by 67%. Driving at high speeds reduces the driver's field of, min of, of vision and creates a tunnel vision, making it more difficult to see pedestrians or other vehicles and or bicycles, and in our, the case of the village, um, scooters. Driving at high speeds, uh, at the lower speeds, drivers have a, wilder, a wider field of vision and will notice other road users. So for those reasons, I am in favor of reducing the uh, speed limit as is outlined in the local law, as is going to be outlined in the request. Um, our mayor has already sent a request for a traffic speed study. That's with three minutes, Susan, excuse okay. me, I'm sorry. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yes. Ms. Parker, I actually, I spoke to the regional director, Mr. Sorello, last week and I officially put in a request to him in that conversation. So the issue was that we cannot do anything until that's done. And the problem was with the weather coming up, he did not know the time frame in which they could keep the uh, speed, uh, whatever those things are called, it's cords or wires across the street. The speed monitor or yeah. whatever. So it might not completely take place until the spring. And the reason we had to um, forego the public hearing tonight was because we have 86 days, is it? 62. 62. 62. 62. Okay, I apologize, 62 days in order to vote on that. And if it gets put off until spring, we would not have that. And we just needed also to uh, do a few uh, additions and, and corrections that uh, our attorney suggested to be made also in addition to that. So we agree totally with all the speed reductions. That's not a question and it wasn't put off due to any of that. It was just put off due to the fact that Mr. Cirillo said, they will do a study, and there is not even a guarantee that once a study is done, that they will approve that, but a study needs to be done nonetheless. Okay, yeah. So that's where we are with that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mary Croxton, 22 Gillis Street, and the village. Um, I'm not going to reiterate uh, what Susan has said. I'm in total agree with agreement with her and uh, by the way thank you for this opportunity to speak I find it very difficult 
to uh, change speeds down Main Street. You don't like, you know, my, am I going 30 now? And this, you know, and then all of a sudden it's 40 and then down to 30 and you're in front of a school with a really important crossing. A lot of students are crossing now. I've seen that happen. So I, I think that um, making a consistent speed down Main Street is going to be an important um, safety measure. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know if this is germane to what uh, Mr. Uh, Trustee Linden said, but um, you talked about not having enough space on the grid. Well, why don't we cut off uh, the coal fire coal fire plant electricity coming in from Pennsylvania to make room for? Um, clean and energy that, that and that's just a comment that would be a national grid question yeah, to I them know, and not know, to us in the PSC saying, you know, but but if you're talking about if you're talking about this situation I think it's more I complicated think, and then oh, yeah, just I to say it's yeah it's a, like probably a PSC thing is, and and so forth that that's yep thank you nobody else okay is there any correspondence related to no, the public portion? <clears throat> then I will close the public portion of this meeting. Move on to our reports. I have a few items to report tonight. On Saturday, I participated in the annual Fredonia Poffert Recreation Department Trunk or Treat event. It was a super event. I want to thank our recreational director, Kayla Sullivan, for putting on a great event. The weather was perfect, the crowd was large, and it was fantastic. We had a great time handing out candy and seeing all of our community that day. So great job, Kayla, and everybody else who participated. Tonight, trick-or-treating started at 4.30, and it was already complete at 7.30 tonight. Residents were encouraged to turn off their porch lights when they no longer wish to participate. I want to wish everyone a happy Halloween. I hope it is a safe one. October 28th was National First Responders Day. I want to personally thank all our first responders and tell them how much I respect all that they do each and every day. It is important to dial 911 in an emergency situation, and we honor all those who answer these calls each and every day. Thank you to all the first responders out there. We appreciate all of you. That's all I have to report tonight. Trustee Linden. I don't have any reports. Thank you. Trustee Twitchell. I just want to say what a great day it was on Saturday also. I participated, and I believe we had uh, 1,000 children show up, so it was a really well-attended event. And thank you to Kayla Sullivan for organizing it. Yes, very nice. Thank you. Trustee Bird. Uh, same thing on the trick or trunk or treat. It was a phenomenal event, and uh, I'd like to thank everybody that participated. Um, the previous weekend, we did the uh, ghost tour walk with the Festivals Fredonia. I'd also say that was a well-run, very great event for the village. Uh, the actors that did the different skits in the cemetery were phenomenal. And uh, it was wonderful weather to travel through. So just, if you guys get a chance to do these Fredonia Festival things or our, our rec department stuff, please take advantage of it because it's really well done. Super, thank you, Trustee Bird. Trustee Syracuse. I have nothing to report. Thank you, Trustee Esperson. Just a reminder that a week from Friday is the Veterans, Veterans Day Parade that the school puts on. So all veterans are invited to bring the cars um, behind the school. Um, and if you, um, there are posters around town about when it starts. There's also one down in our lobby. Thank you. Uh, anything uh, with the treasurer and treasurer's report tonight? I just have the September information. Uh, our revenue for the general fund was $4,123,000. Expenses were $2,210,000 for a net income of $1,913,000. Water revenue was 457000 Expenses are 629000 with a net income of negative 172000 And sewer revenue was 499000 Expenses are 732000 The net income of negative 232000 Our Attorney fees came in significantly lower than they have been. They were only $3,600 between the three funds, so hopefully that continues and we don't have too many more issues. Thank you. Clerk, do we have any reports from you? 
Okay, thank you. We'll move on to additional reports then. The Fredonia Fire Department report for the month of September 2022. Total fire two, overpressure, sorry, rescue and EMS. 128. Hazard conditions, no fire, five. Service calls, eight. Good intent calls, nine. False alarm and false call, 28, for a total of 180. And that's the only report I have this time. Thank you. Kind of fitting, huh? I was going to say 129, but <laughs> this is for September, so it's a new month. We're going. Uh, we'll move on to resolutions. Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia wishes to assess the advisability of submitting a Community Development Block Grant CDBG application to the New York State of to the New York State Office of Community Renewal, or the OCR, for a grant to support the renovation, equipping, and furnishing of the White Inn at 52 East Main Street in the Village by DNS White Inn LLC, and whereas the Village of Fredonia is required to hold a public hearing to provide information to the public and to consider citizen comments regarding community needs and the project proposal prior to submitting an application for CDBG funding, and whereas the Board of Trustees wishes to schedule a special meeting to consider Submission of the application for CDBG funding. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village of Fredonia hereby calls for a public hearing where all interested parties should, shall be heard regarding the CDBG program, the Village's community development and economic development programs, and the potential funding application. And be it further resolved that such public hearings shall be held on November 14, 2022, at 6 p.m. at the Village Hall, Trustees Room. 9-11 Church Street, Fredonia, New York, and be it further resolved that at least eight days notice of such <coughs> hearing shall be given by the village clerk by the due posting thereof on the village's website and by publishing such notice at least in at least once in the official newspaper of the village. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Whereas pursuant to section 20 of the municipal law of the state of New York, a public hearing must be held on the adoption of proposed law five of 2022, a local law amending section 287-2A of the code of the village of Fredonia to provide an increased water rate from 480 to 580 per 1,000 gallons. Local law number six of 2022, a local law amending section 237-15D of the code of the village of Fredonia to provide an increase in sewer rates. Notice of such public hearing to be published in the official newspaper observer now therefore. Be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees of the Village of Fredonia hereby schedules a public hearing on the 20th day of 28th day of November 2022 at 6 p.m. in Trustee Room, second floor in Village Hall, 911 Church Street, Fredonia, New York, to receive comments on the proposed local laws. Be it further resolved that the Village Clerk is hereby directed to public notice of said hearing pursuant to Village Law. Second. It's been motion to second. Do we do we need to to uh, indicate what the sewer rates are changing from? It says what the water rates are, but it doesn't say what the sewer rates are being changed. It doesn't even indicate the full water rates, the only a portion of the water rates. Not, it doesn't include the base rate inc increases on either one or the water or the sewer rates. <coughs> Trustee Bird wants you to read, Let me read local, local law number five and six, please. Local law five of 2022, it, whereas said proposed local law reads as follows. The local law should be entitled a local law amending section 287-8A of the Code of the Village of Fredonia to provide an increased water rate from 480 to 580 per 1,000 gallons. Um, section 287-8A of the Code of the Village of Fredonia last amended on May 22, 2017 by local law number one of 2017 is hereby amended to read as follows. Section 287-8A rates for metered water service within the Village of Fredonia. Water for su supplied by the Village of Fredonia for, from and after November 1st, 2022 and for each quarterly period, therefore, after the following rates are hereby fixed and shall be collected on all water meter service within the Village of Fredonia, a minimum of charge of $30 plus $580 per 1,000 gallons. Note, water rates of the Town of Pomfret and Town of Dunkirk, water districts or outside of the Village customers shall be increased accordingly as provided by the contracts with the Village of Fredonia and such outside water customer. This local sh law shall take effect November 1st, 2022. Local yes. law number six of 2022. That'll have to be changed, I think, if the yes. public hearing isn't until yeah. the 28th. So, okay. so the trustees should be... December 1st. Date will have to be changed. We can change it tonight right now, if you'd like. Okay. December 1st? December 1st. Okay. So this local law shall take effect no, or December 1st, 2022. 
Local law number six of 2022, whereas said proposed local laws read as follows. The local, section one, the local law shall be entitled a local law amending section 237, 15D of the Code of the Village of Fredonia to increase sewer rates or rentals. Section two, section 237, 15D of the Code of the Village of Fredonia last amended on May 22nd, 22nd, 2017 by local law number two of 2017 is hereby amended to read as follows. Section 237.15D for sewer services from and after December 1st, 2022, said sewer rate charges, also referred to as sewer charges, are fixed for customers within the village at the following quarterly charge. A minimum charge of $25 plus $717 for each additional 1,000 gallons of water supplied as measured by water meters approved by the village of Fredonia or sewer meters approved by the village of Fredonia. Note sewer charges of the Town of Pomfret and Town of Dunkirk District or other outside the village customers shall be increased accordingly as provided by contracts within the village of Fredonia and such outside sewer customers. This local law shall take effect December 1st, 2022. Okay, there was a motion that was a second. I did second it, yes. Okay, there was a motion and a second. Trustee London. Nay. Trustee Twitchell. Nay. Trustee Bird, yay. Trustee uh, um, Syracuse, yes. And Trustee Esperson, yes. The motion was carried three to two. Be it resolved that Alexander Kirkin, forty-seven Risley Street, Fredonia, New York, is hereby appointed to the position of part-time firefighter at the hourly rate of twenty-two dollars with no other benefits effective November 1st, 2022. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Be it resolved that Robert Zacker, 154 Paul Drive, Amherst, New York, is hereby appointed to the position of part-time firefighter at the hourly rate, hourly rate of $2 with no other benefits effective. $22. $22. Twenty. What did I say? Two. Oh, Two. That, would be, that would be a steal. Twenty-two dollars with no other benefits effective November first, twenty twenty-two. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Whereas the Village of Fredonia has an immediate opening in the position of emergency and police dispatcher, now therefore be it resolved that Joshua Bartok of six six three nine East Lake Road, Mayville, New York is hereby hired as a full-time emergency and police dispatcher to work at the police station at an hourly rate of 1735 and a six month probationary period effective November 14th, 2022. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Be it resolved that the regular and overtime payrolls of the various village departments and bills approved by the finance committee and set forth, set forth in abstract number 641 through 644, I hereby approved and directed paid and filed in the village clerk's office, 9 through 11 Church Street, Fredonia, New York. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Whereas the village is pro proceeding with the implementation of a joint comprehensive plan between the village of Fredonia and the town of Pomfret, and whereas the process to approve and implement the comprehensive plan requires compliance with the state environment conservation law, seeker, and, de and designation of a lead agency for further review. Therefore, be it resolved, the Village of Fredonia Board is designed as a lead agency for the village's review, determinations, and adoption process for the com comprehensive plan as required by the seeker, and is further resolved that the village representatives are authorized to continue to work with Ingalls, planning and design in the town of Pomfret to prepare and execute necessary environmental assessment forms as part of the CEQA <coughs> process. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. I believe we need to enter into executive session. So the meeting schedule, next Village of Fredonia workshop and board meeting will take place on Monday, November 14, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. in the trustee room, second floor of Village Hall. You might have a specific motion to enter into executive session. Is there any? I'll make the motion. Okay. 
to enter an executive session for the purpose of for the purpose of personnel matters. Okay. I'd also like to enter an executive session for the purpose of possible specific litigation. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. There's been a motion and a second to enter an executive session. Trustee Linden. Aye. Trustee Twitchell. Aye. Trustee Bird. Aye. Trustee Syracuse. Aye. Trustee Esperson. Aye. Carried. Do we need Chief Price to stay?